Today, we're breaking down quicksort, piece by piece, so you can see exactly how it works. Let's start sorting. Let's say we have these numbers, 3, 6, 8, 10, 1, 2, 7. We want to sort them using quicksort. First, we pick a special number called a pivot. Let's choose 7 for now. Our goal is to move numbers smaller than 7 to one side and larger to the other side. We start from the first item, as 3 is less than 7, so it goes on the left. 6 is also less than 7, joining 3 on the left. 8 is more than 7, so it goes on the right. 10 follows, heading to the right of 7. 1 is less than 7, to the left it goes. And 2 is less than 7, so it joins the left side. We've got 3, 6, 1, and 2 on the left of 7, and 8 and 10 on the right. 7 stays in the center for now. Now we focus on the left side. 3, 6, 1, and 2. For the left side, we'll use 2 as our new pivot. 3 is more than 2. It goes to the right. 6 is also more than 2, so it joins 3 on the right. 1 is less than 2. It stays on the left. The left side is sorted with 1 on the left of pivot 2 and 3 and 6 on the right. With 1 already in the correct place, we'll now sort the right side of 2, the numbers 3 and 6. Here we have 3 and 6. Since there are only two numbers and 3 is less than 6, they are already in the correct order. The left side of our original array is now completely sorted. 1, 2, 3, and 6. Next, we move to the right side of our original pivot, 7, where we have the numbers 8 and 10. Looking at 8 and 10, we see they are already in the correct order as well, with no numbers between them to sort. Our array is now fully sorted. The final order is 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, and 10. Quicksort has done its job. We're going to explain a JavaScript implementation of the quicksort algorithm. This approach uses the first element as the pivot. We start with a function called quicksort, which takes an array r as its parameter. The function begins with a base case. If the array has one or no elements, it's already sorted, and we simply return the array. We then choose the first element of the array as our pivot. Two empty arrays, left and right, are created to hold elements less than and greater than the pivot, respectively. We iterate through the rest of the array. Each element is compared to the pivot. If it's smaller, it goes into the left array. If it's larger or equal, it goes into the right array. Finally, we recursively call quick sort on both the left and right arrays. The sorted left array, the pivot, and the sorted right array are concatenated together to form the sorted array. This becomes the return value of our quick sort function call. Next, we discuss the pros and cons of this approach. Let's mix in the pros first. Number one, it's easy to understand. If you're just diving into the deep end of coding, this approach is like the shallow pool, clear and simple. Next, it's concise. This code is short and sweet, folks. It uses JavaScript's cool tricks to keep things tight, like a magician pulling a rabbit out of a hat. And it's recursive. This is where the magic happens. The function keeps calling itself to sort pieces of the puzzle. It's like cleaning your room by first tidying up one corner at a time. Now, let's flip the coin and look at the cons. Con number one, extra space. This approach is a bit of a hoarder, folks. It creates new arrays every time it divides the list, which can really pile up. Con number two, not optimized. This method can get stuck in a rut by always picking the first element as the pivot. Imagine always starting a maze from the same wrong turn. Not the best strategy, right? And finally, the stack overflow risk. Because the function keeps calling itself, it could get overwhelmed with a really long list. It's like if you tried to carry all your groceries in one trip. Sometimes it's just too much. The next approach we're exploring is an in-place version of the quick sort algorithm. This one doesn't create new arrays for each split. It sorts the array by rearranging the elements directly within the original array. Let's dive into the code and see how it works. First, let's look at the complete function, quick sort in place. This function takes three arguments. R, the array you want to sort, left, the starting index of the array segment you want to sort, and right, the ending index. If you don't provide left and right, they default to zero, and the last index of the array, respectively, meaning it will sort the entire array. In this function, the first thing we do is check if left 
is greater than or equal to right. If it is, we just return because it means there's nothing to sort, or we're down to a single element. The magic happens with the call to the partition function. That's where we choose a pivot and move all elements smaller than the pivot to its left and all larger elements to its right. Then, we recursively call quick sort in place on the subarrays to the left and right of the pivot, excluding the pivot itself since it's already in its final position. Now, let's break down the partition function. Here, we're picking the rightmost element as our pivot. We then loop through the array, and whenever we find an element less than the pivot, we swap it with the element at partition index, which we increment each time we make such a swap. After we've gone through the array, we swap the pivot element with the one at the partition index. Now our pivot is in the correct spot, and we return its index. Lastly, we have a simple swap function that uses array destructuring to exchange the values at two indices in our array. And there you have it. That's how quicksort works. This in-place version is very memory efficient since it doesn't require allocating additional arrays. Let's examine the pros and cons of this method. On the pros side, we have space efficiency. This approach doesn't need extra storage for additional arrays. Next up, in-place operations. It sorts the array by modifying it directly, which can lead to improved performance. It's also optimized for large data sets. Let's turn down the heat and simmer over to the cons. Complexity of code is our first one. This approach has more moving parts, and with complexity comes the greater need for precision. With that, we have the risk of bugs. More complexity means more chances for little critters to slip into your code. And lastly, the recursion limit. While recursion is a nifty trick, if your array is too long, you might hit a system stack limit. Moving on, let's talk about the time complexity of quicksort. Time complexity gives us an idea of how the sorting time increases with the size of the input. In the best and average cases, where the pivot divides the array into relatively equal parts, the quicksort algorithm works incredibly efficiently. Each partitioning involves looking at each element, which gives us the n part of the complexity, and the log n part comes from the number of times we need to split the array to get down to individual elements. However, in the worst case, when the pivot ends up being the smallest or the largest element in each partition, the efficiency drops. Instead of splitting the array evenly, we're only reducing the problem size by one element at a time. This means we have to partition and sort n times, leading to a time complexity of O n squared. In quicksort, the space complexity can vary significantly depending on whether you're using an in-place version or a non-in-place version. The space complexity for the in-place version of quicksort is O log n. This is because the algorithm sorts the array by recursively partitioning it into smaller sections. The space needed is for the stack frames due to recursion, and since the deepest level of recursion is proportional to the number of times we can halve the array, it results in a logarithmic space requirement. For non-in-place versions of quicksort, which involve creating new arrays for each partition, the space complexity can be O n. This is because each recursive call can potentially create new arrays whose sizes sum to the size of the original array, leading to a linear space requirement in the worst case. That concludes our look at quicksort. We've covered how it works, its advantages, its efficiency, and its resource use. Thanks for watching! If you liked the video, hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more. Tap the bell to get notifications. Check out other videos on the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care!